What's up, TEDx Detroiters? How you doing today? My name's Bill, and I'm an entrepreneur here in the city of Detroit. And today my talk is going to be about energy consumption, uh, specifically with buildings. But let's start off with a little bit of context. Um, U.S. alone has around 319 million people. That makes for around 4.5% uh, of the 7 billion people that are in the world. And U.S. uses around one-fifth of the total energy consumption in the world. It's a huge fact to know. Um, if you were to combine uh, uh, the European Union and China, we use more energy and we have more emissions on a per capita basis as the United States as a country. So these facts are huge. Another little thing to keep in your mind is that um, on a daily basis, the United States uses around 19 million barrels of crude oil a day, and that makes for around 7 billion barrels of crude in a, in a year. Um, so Americans, we know how to use our energy. Um, and for my talk today, I'd like to talk to you about this building re revolution that's happening um, as it relates to technology for how can we begin to figure out ways to do buildings design and build them in a way that we can work to not eventually kill the planet. Uh, so on this year, August 8th, we hit what's called Earth Overshoot Day. Basically what that means is a, uh, as mankind, we've consumed more energy, or I should say more resources than the Earth's ability to replenish them in an annual uh, basis. And that's important to understand because then we operate the rest of the year basically on credit. We have a credit card with the Earth. Um, if we look at historical CO2 data, we can see that cyclical in nature, it's spiked. And we're at a level of around 400 parts per million now, like in 2016, which is a dangerous level to be at. Um, with CO2 comes the temperature rise. So as long as we've been tracking temperature data by the last 134 years, um, since 2000, we've had 10 of the warmest years on record. This is, these, these facts are insane. Um, the best way to typically view this are pictures like this. This is a, a glacier in Alaska, August 1882, August 2005. So um, buildings, specifically in the United States, are a large part of the U.S. greenhouse gas emissions. They're the worst offenders. We're around 41% compared to transportation and, of course, industry. Um, so before we get into some problem-solving solutions and not just talk about all this negative stuff, let's first talk about my two T's for you today. I've got Tesla, the car company, and also turkeys, okay? So Henry Ford said it best when he said, you can't build a reputation on what you're going to do. That's why I introduced to you my uh, role model, Elon Musk. And Elon is uh, the guy that came out with the, one of the first electric cars in recent history and with you know extended range and on a production basis. He's in an Iron Man suit because he helped figure out the Tony Stark character, I've been told, and I would also love to have an Iron Man suit to fly around in, maybe. Uh, but that was in 2012, so just four years later, we now have a, around 11 options of EVs with similar performance on the marketplace. So there's a paradigm shift that was hit, and this is just EV technology, and you can see electronic vehicle sales growth is certainly on the rise. Um, so my second thing, turkeys. We're coming up, it's almost Thanksgiving. Let's talk about turkeys. So this is a graph of turkeys. I don't have a picture of a turkey, so I'll be the turkey. Um, basically, I'm with my turkey friends, and we're on the farm, and we're having a great time in a turkey way, and we're eating turkey food, which that kind of sounds like the cannibals. But the point is, is that um, you know we have our annual feast, and then bam. The, the turkey is now served, it's on our plates, and there's no more. And the reason we bring this up is to explain that from the per turkey's perspective, it was hard to forecast this event. Um, from them, they're just happy and, you know, hanging out, eating food, and I don't think they fly. Uh, but basically, uh, the point is to bring up is that this event can be related to electronic vehicles. It, it can also be related to passive house. So, I have a weird thing with minions. I think they're hilarious. Um, but 
Passive House is a technology that is a solution for buildings to be able to reduce our energy consumption from a new building by 75%. That's huge. So think about this, for example, if you're brunch fans. On the conventional side, we've got the mimosa with just orange juice, a little bit of champagne. Then on the right, Passive House is all orange, or excuse me, all champagne with just a little splash of, of um, orange juice. So bad example. Let's keep going. Energy efficiency. As a pillar, we can say that when you match energy efficiency, reducing your consumption on a per unit basis, and you add renewables, like we heard earlier today, with wind, we've got solar. As a function, as a pillar, um, we can bring fossil fuel down to destruction, which means that we can get off using these types of fuels. So really quick, what's Passive House? We're all wondering. Passive House is a technology solution that focuses on the envelope as the actual the technology of the product. It's a continuous insulation and airtight detail. South-facing windows helps heat the house or building in the wintertime with small mechanicals. So we just basically sip fuel rather than actively consuming constant all the time. And just like the turkeys and just like the EV cars, Passive House has just been out just a few short years and we've seen doubling growth, cumulative growth with this type and way of building. So you know, you must think maybe it's weird. Maybe Passive House looks weird. It doesn't. These are Passive Houses on the east and west coast. Um, they're also in Europe, different parts of the country. It's a global solution, okay? US is just a little bit late to the game. So I have to refer to the Germans. Um, in, in Germany, they have a mature building industry. They've been operating on the mindset of something similar to Passive House for quite some time. Just in May, with renewables, they were almost off-grid consuming no fossil fuels. That's huge. So let me phrase this conversation, bring it back down to Detroit. When's the last time you assembled your automobile? Just in general, except maybe doing a kick car. But um, essentially never. We focused on doing this always in a production um, you know, ability for, to be able to produce cars with focusing on quality, time, and efficiency. So why are we not doing that when it comes to construction in the United States? There are some exceptions, but we largely are doing everything based off of uh, on-site stick build. So I introduced to you my company called Phoenix House. Uh, we're over on the east side of Detroit, and we've invested into Passive House as a technology and doing it in a prefabricated sense, which means it's panelized, which means you buy a product, it gets put together on site in a week, and you've got a house that's performing like I've explained what Passive House is. Here are some examples of projects that we've either been working with or that exist. These are all Michigan-based. and. The one in the top right is one that's in Saginaw. Saginaw, folks, like this is, you know, this stuff is existing and people are taking advantage of it. The red one's in Holly. The ones on the bottom are planned in Ann Arbor and in Detroit. So I leave you with this. Martin Luther King did not say, I have a nightmare. Um, we need to better articulate the dream to create a restorative future with the ability to see beyond our outmoded ideas around sustainability. Thank you.